welcome to the World Cup Project. My name is Kerry, if you're new here. I am a student dietitian and I make videos helping people with IBS, mostly with a low FODMAP diet, with some yoga and things. And today I want to talk about how your kind of menstrual cycle, your hormonal cycle, um, if you have one, can affect your IBS symptoms because it's fascinating and didn't learn not anything really that useful at school. So here I am, a grown woman, learning it probably, properly for the first time anyway. Um, I've been listening to the book Period Power by Maisie Hill and it's so interesting and it's such a different perspective on what I think sometimes we're made to feel really ashamed and bad about when it's actually, it's a really beautiful and powerful cycle that allows us to really like grow as human beings. Um, but yes, it does affect IBS and I want to explain to you why. We have gone old school. I have drawn it out because I'm not going to be able to animate this anyway. So I'm going to start with just an overview of how you feel during your cycle and then talk about how it might impact IBS. So in the spring, which is straight after your period, you're going to be feeling increasingly productive and motivated and social because your oestrogen is rising in your oestrogen dominant. And that's going to then peak in your summer and you've got this luteinizing hormone which triggers you to release an egg and you're going to be feeling really resilient and confident and energetic you're going to be feeling you know a bit flirty because your libido is going to peak because you're very fertile at this point and um, so both of these times it's a really your spring is a really good time to take on new projects and you know if you're going to do the low fat, low fat diet for example fantastic you've got lots of energy and motivation to do it so after that your spring and summer your progesterone starts to rise and your oestrogen falls, you become progesterone dominant. And you move into your autumn, where you're going to be a bit less energetic and you're going to feel a bit more of a need to retreat and be less social. So that's a really important time to take care of yourself and it's going to change how your period is. If you know, if you take care of yourself now, you'll have a much better winter. So it's also when your inner critic can be heightened, which means you're really good at editing and making decisions and knowing what you want to keep and what you don't. Um, you might have a nesting instinct, so you'll be decluttering and cleaning and making a nice home for yourself. And you're also going to have an increased appetite. So then your pedestrian drops, everything kind of drops, and you have your winter. So that's when you'll have menstruation, and that's a really beautiful time to just be gentle and slow down, to reflect, and you can have a sense of relief from the build-up of emotions you will have in your win um, autumn. So you kind of move through this cycle of kind of going out and in of introspection and creation and editing. So I feel like the way that it's described in period power, I think is really positive and it makes you kind of excited to be in touch with that ebb and flow that you have in the real world seasons and with your body. So how can this impact IBS? We're going to start in autumn. So progesterone is actually a muscle relaxant. So when it's peaking, here you can actually experience constipation or you might be more likely to experience constipation because it reduces the peristalsis movement in your gut so if you think if um, you have intestines it's kind of moving like this and that's what squeezes along the poop but if that's reduced it's not moving along quickly and you start to get dehydration because the slower it moves more water can move out and that kind of perpetuates that so then people can sometimes experience um, period poops, I think they're usually called. <laughs> um, when that progesterone drops, the peristalsis returns at the same speed and you start to feel that sense of relief. So if you're already kind of prone to constipation, diarrhea, that could be part of what's triggering it. Sometimes as well, with the increased appetite, we might turn to more junk food, which can have more triggers. So that can kind of make the period poops maybe more urgent and less pleasant so that's something to keep in mind and then when we're having our periods the cells in our endometrium the lining of the womb as they shed they can release prostaglandins these actually trigger the contraction of the uterus to help you know help that uh, lining leave so very useful. However, it can sort of diffuse into the rest of your body. It doesn't just stay in the uterus. So it can go to your guts, your stomach, and even your brain. So that can sometimes be the culprit of um, diarrhea. So, you know, kind of the opposite of reducing the peristalsis. If you're shouting contract, it's squeezing things out maybe too quickly. 
in your stomach and make you feel nauseous and it can even cause um, migraines. There aren't actually many studies looking at this in general, but definitely in relation to IBS, there aren't very much. Um, but it's thought that people with IBS are maybe more sensitive to the sudden drops in progesterone and estrogen. So the things you can do are first and foremost is to track your cycle. If you're not anyway, it's really useful for knowing when you need to take care of yourself or when you need to push yourself and go out in the world and do brave things. And then identify patterns. So you might be able to pinpoint the exact days when you get these sudden drops and know how to take care of yourself. And then if you're prone to constipation around your autumn, you might know this is a really important time for me to increase my fibre, but not necessarily the FODMAPs that are my triggers. Turn to things like gentle yoga to kind of massage your abdomen. So some of the videos on my channel will be really good for that. Um, and others, of course. You want to make sure you're drinking lots of water because that really does help with the constipation because when the, the poop sort of dries out, it then doesn't move along very easily either. You want to be reducing stress. Obviously, I think that... I mean, there's never a bad time to reduce stress, but it's going to be extra important. And then if you're prone to really bad diarrhoea, kind of just before and around your period, you might want to then be extra careful to avoid triggers. Schedule in rest for yourself if you can. Again, make sure you rehydrate and reducing stress again. So it might be, again, a gentle yoga practice, breathing exercises, um, but just staying away from signing up for a really intense HIIT workout or something that's just going to make everything worse. So I hope that gave you a useful overview of how that ebb and flow of your hormones probably is impacting your IBS and a few things you can do about it, but obviously track first. Um, I would really recommend the book uh, Period Power. I love listening to it, although I kind of want to make notes and reference things, but um, I think while I'm studying, I'm obviously reading a lot and it's really nice to be able to go out for a walk and listen on audio. So um, it's an audible only one. I've not sponsored this video, but I did find an affiliate link because I was like, I've been using Audible for years. So if you don't already, it's very useful for getting through lots of books. So I have put an affiliate link below. So if you were going to sign up to Audible anyway, please use my link. You can support the channel and it costs you nothing extra. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping I can do a kind of, um, I guess, female hormone reproductive system health series in relation to IBS because there's lots of crossover. Things like um, endometriosis, endometriosis, for example, it takes like eight years for people on average to be diagnosed when a lot of them are also just kind of dismissed with an IBS diagnosis, which obviously isn't the case. And I think there needs to be more research and awareness, but I'm hoping I can find maybe um, a health professional who specialises in that to come on the channel and talk about it and kind of explore other things which are all involved in the gut and your of hormonal health so look out for that let me know if you're interested if there's any like particular topic you want me to discuss in relation to it but yeah i hope it was interesting and i hope you're well whichever season you're in um yeah i'll see you in the next video bye